What if I told you that right now someone was choosing if you were going to live or die? What if I told you that this choice wasn't based on what you could or couldn't do, what you've done in the past, or what you would do in the future? And what if I told you you could do nothing about it? Well, that guest is coming up in a moment, but while Parliament is clear it won't open the abortion debate, even with sex selection abortion on its docket, others certainly are. Canada's Leah Mills was just 12 years old when she tackled abortion in a class assignment. That speech became a YouTube sensation, which led to her having to change her name to protect herself and her family from multiple death threats because she simply stated her view on abortion. We've also asked for a medical opinion on this discussion, and Dr. Paul Rinaldi teaches at the Faculty of Medicine at the University of Toronto. He's a neurologist at the Humber River Regional Hospital, as well as at the University Health Network here in Toronto. And he's written widely on the subject of fetal pain. And thank you both for being at Context. Leah, you have had an education like few of us Canadians have. What kind of country did you discover when you became so open with your pro-life views? I think one thing I definitely realize is that there's a lot of fear about talking about this issue because there's I think just such a stigma I think we just kind of close it down and no one wants to talk about it because it's so controversial and so I think that there's a really big fear of going to this question and saying um, like actually opening the abortion debate. Your parents came with you tonight. All of you have changed your name because you've gone public. Yeah. Were people really threatening? Originally, my mom was the one who handled the, um, the YouTube channel, and we would get sometimes 2,000 comments just spamming the first video, um, and it really shocked us because we were just... I was just recording the speech that I made for my class presentation, and so it kind of really opened our eyes to the controversy. But yeah, we did get a lot of negative comments, but a lot of positive ones too. You are part of a youth movement. It's called For My Canada. You visit MPs of all parties. You uh, lobby them. You enter your activism. I'm going to give a bit of a reveal here because on a, a, a very personal Christian conviction. And some people would say, Leah, keep your nice Christian views at home. Keep them out of my rights. Mm -hmm. What would you say to that? I find when it's appropriate, I'll, um, I'll express my Christian faith. I'm not ashamed of it in any way, but I think there, there is a time when we have to go based on science and we have to address questions like, are the unborn human? Um, or look at the numbers, like is sex selective pregnancy termination really an issue? But um, I don't hide the fact that I'm Christian because I believe that this is something that God cares about. Thank you for being so brave. I want to turn to our doctor to now, and Dr. Paul Rinaldi, um, you, you have looked at this motion, M408, <coughs> um, as a specialist in neonatal development and a person of faith. How do you look at this um, issue of sex selection abortion in Canada? Well, the sex selection part of it is not that complicated uh, scientifically. It's more of a complicated social issue, especially for those who are adamantly pro-choice to kind of wrap their minds around. Um, scientifically and ethically, I think, um, destroying or targeting unborn uh, girls in the womb, unborn baby girls, is, is a subset. Um, higher upstream is it's, it's not right to, to target all unborn children. Um, but as a doctor who, who knows the humanity of the fetus, it's, um, every abortion is a tragedy and targeted ones are especially so. Tell us what you have learned from science about the humanity of the unborn. Well, how long is your program? Um, uh, you know, the, the bond between a mother and her child is profound and it begins very early. Um, there's an exchange of cells and the, the child within um, has a different, um, often a different blood type right from the start, different uh, antigens and on and on, the development of the organ systems. And um, things that we kind of feel in a wanted pregnancy, uh, the baby is developing within um, um, Princess Kate has a baby, she doesn't just have a fetus or uh, and disorganized protoplasm. Those things are actually borne out by science. We now can see the baby in the womb. You've seen ultrasound pictures, it's wonderful. And the development of the brain at a very early stage, the development of pain, the ability to feel pain, seems to be in place uh, tragically when some late abortions are performed. 
Should the fetus have a right to protection? Because that's what motion 408 ultimately comes down to. Well, I've, I've, I would say of course, because I would rephrase the question is, should a civilized country and a caring country like Canada have civil rights? Now we have to balance rights and um, I'm in no position, my heart goes out to women who are in a difficult position, whether it's their own choice or whether it's something they feel coerced from a boyfriend um, or, or a community cultural idea as we've had. It's a difficult choice, there needs to be a balance. There's certainly no balance now. And we have, if you look at the science of it, the illogic of it, if you have two women, let's say neighbors, who are pregnant at the same time, um, one gives birth prematurely at 24 weeks gestation, that baby in the neonatal ICU has the full power of Canadian weight behind it. But her neighbor, who's carrying on to 38 and 40 weeks, three to four months later, that child within has zero rights right now. Now scientifically, that doesn't make sense. And I'm hoping that the law will be able to catch up at some time. All right, thank you both. This has been very challenging. And uh, there's more on both of your views on our website. When we come back, a Punjabi daughter steps boldly away from cultural norms as she rethinks the value of girls in and outside the womb. Stay tuned. We're going to conclude today with Aruna Pap. You, um, Aruna, have experienced the deepest forms of gender discrimination in your family. It was uh, a deeply fundamentalist Christian family. Over 30 years, you have publicly denounced all kinds of forms of discrimination and pain that religion can cause. Why have you not given up on God? Christianity, everybody dis defines Christianity in their own way. For me, Christianity means helping another human being. And I do believe with all my heart that God had a plan for my life. 60 million women in India are missing. I should have been one of them. I could have been one of them. So when I talk about immigrant women, helping these women who have no voice is not racism. It's giving them humanity and a place and a time to talk and be human. I couldn't read or write when I came to Canada. I was 21, I had an arranged marriage and two little girls. Canada, I believed, would give me the opportunity to hold my head up and bring opportunities for my daughters. They are professional women. I couldn't read or write, I have two masters. So that is what Christianity is. And there are women like myself who need help, but they didn't have the voice, just like I didn't. Thank you very much for challenging us today. You're welcome. Well, there's much more on our website, Aruna's excellent book, the views of all our guests. You can get connected to their websites. And I'm sure you've got a lot of opinions on the controversies you heard today. So if you need help on the issues we raised, we take that very seriously. And each mail, tweet, or Facebook post does get answered with a personal uh, reply and followed up. So here's the information on how you can get in touch with us up on the board right now. Um, drop us your views. We appreciate hearing from you on all these things. I'm going to do it. Thank you for thinking with us.